first. Uh, but yeah, so this was his very first build, and for now we will just be talking about blueprints that he made. Um, at some point I'll do a park showcase, um, how they've improved through there. Um, but for now we'll just look at uh, how he's improved through blueprints. And just by looking at it, I do know um, that back in the day, because this is back in the beta, um, they were given a lot less money to work with, and you were supposed to build something very um, extravagant with it. And for what he did with the money, which I think the limit was 10,000, he did a really nice job. I love this sort of covered area uh, over the start line, and of course all of this is vanilla, um, uh, for sure. Um, I do love all these like pipes coming out, it feels very like factory type. Um, and I love the windows, and I love how like, you have this tiered uh, go-kart track on top. Um, I think that just works really, really nicely. Just the way that it comes around the helix, around these cylindrical uh, factories, and the way they're connected is really cool. Um, but yeah, I guess the go-karts would go under the queue, which is really cool. It goes into a sort of industry with some containers, um, which I really love. I love that the containers are just like over here in the custom-made containers. Um, go past like, I guess, some trash, um, or some like, I guess, uh, I don't I remember what those are called, Cont I guess just containers, um, over another bridge, and then you actually ride on that bridge, and this bridge is really well done, uh, for being vanilla, it's really, really cool, and I love how it just sort of arches over, um, nicely, I think that's really, really cool, I especially like this truck as well, this vanilla truck is really beautiful, honestly. Um, it, it is funny that it is uh, cube wheels, but before we didn't have cylinder uh, cylinders uh, on their sides, so it makes sense that he had to use cubes, um, as that is your only option. So yeah, this is very... Oh, and I didn't realize. This is supposed to be like a container truck, or the container connected to the truck. Oh, that's really cool. It's a semi-truck. And so you drive through the container that the semi was connected to. I love that. That's really cool. Um, then you go over here into this sort of brick industry building. Come around this curve with some pretty cool, like, steampunky uh, arches with some cool effects. Um, I do love how he's done the effects with, like, the electrical cables connected up from there. I love that a lot. That's a really cool idea. Again, the arches and the steampunk feel looks really nice. It's it's very simple, but of course, is work with limited budget. Um, and with that, like I mean, this is pretty cool. I love how it just comes around here, comes around there, goes around that bend, and goes through the line. And it would be the stance if you're curious. Uh, is definitely not 300 intensity. I don't know why I put it at 300 intensity. Um, but I guess it needed to run for. Um, but yeah, apparently it's going to get negative 267 Gs. I mean, that's impressive. And longitudinal G forces are 2000. Like, geez, you're really trying to kill your guests, Robo. Um, but yeah, very, very cool ride. Um, and I think he actually made it, how many laps? Three laps, yeah. Um, but yeah, really cool. Really great job, Robo. I really, really love what you did with this, especially as your first submission and as you're oh, with a limited budget, it is seriously very cool. All right, so now moving on to the next one, we have the Elven City Adventure, um, which I think is actually a really cool uh, team. It's actually kind of cool. Um, I don't remember how much this one costs. Let me look. Elven. It cost 8,000, so even less money this time. Um, but honestly, I like how it's sort of got like this canal feel through here. Um, these sort of beautiful like arches, sort of holding it up, you know. A, someone else could put this in with some path underneath, make that a nice shop area, shopping area. Um, same over here. I actually kind of like how it's almost identical on both sides. Um, and I love this sort of idea of making the roof as water, since you can't put water uh, terrain in the blueprints. I think that's really cool as well. I also really like how 
over here, the trees and the colors are really nice. They give a very magical feel to it. Um, but yeah, there isn't a huge amount to say about this. It's pretty simple. Got some, you know, nice rock work. The colors are really well done. And I love how he actually did the terrain. Um, that's really clever. Um, especially without having, you know, terrain in the first place. It's really clever. Um, so yeah. Very, I would say, very good job for it being, again, vanilla in a limited budget. Um, and that's the Elven. City Adventure. Now here's where I think it starts coming up. Um, I think this is where you start turning it around. Um, and I think it actually starts coming out really cool. Actually, before we keep looking at that, I forgot to look at lighting. Um, let's take a look here. Alright, for this one, there is no lighting, so I guess we will skip this one. For this one, still no lighting, so I guess we'll skip it. So I guess we'll keep going back over here. Um, yeah, okay, so they, he did some lighting here, which is kind of cool. Um, he's got some nice, like, area lighting spotlights coming up. This is sort of the first one that has lighting, um, which is quite nice. I love the, like, little, uh, spotlights and the wall lights he used there. But coming into daytime, um, you got a nice queue, a nice covered queue, got some nice, like, sort of modern buildings. This is supposed to be called Ocean Drive. Um, so I guess very, like, Floridian, tropical theme. Um, it also feels very Florida, uh, themed, like, with the Orlando resorts and everything. Um, which I really like, it's really cute. Um, and I love the go-karts as well, the colors of the go-karts. But yeah, I think the colors really speak to it being that ocean drive, and I think it feels very beachy. And I think that's really cool. Um, yeah, not nothing much else to say. I love how you use the squares. I assume those are squares. Those actually might be borders. Yeah, they're borders, okay. Yeah, I love how you use that. Um, great use. And, yeah. I think for, again, for a vanilla build, this is pretty good. Alright, for the next blueprint, I think this is where he steps it up. Um, I think it goes up, like, a ton. Honestly. it It's crazy amount how much he turns this around for blueprints. Um... He went from, say, like this, um, to something that is super robo for being, again, vanilla. Um, and I love how he did these arches, the rainbow arches as the station. I think that's really beautiful with the clouds, with the spheres being clouds. I think that's really cool. Um, I think that's really magical. I love how the station building is, like, inset into the clouds and even have some cloud puffs coming off of it. Um... It just feels super cool. Um, and I love the cues as well. I love how it's like sort of on the ground and then you get uh, lifted up in the air with the colors. Um, and I think it really fits. This launch building is super cool. I love that it has the red, orange, Roy Biv colors all the way through. And as the thing turns into it, it gets launched off. And I think that's really cool. Um, I also love this tower. This tower is really beautiful. Um, I love the flowers, the clouds, wisps off of it. Um, I love everything about this. Just super magical. I love the pink roof. And yeah, it's just amazing. Um, I especially love this little bridge here. Um, great use of the vanilla pieces here. And you come over to here, I guess it's like a garden, like a cloud garden, which I think is a great idea. Um, I especially love the clown wisps everywhere. Coming over here, you got another little sort of garden, maybe like a ship would, uh, bar or, uh, land here and port here, and I think that's cool. And I love this other building that you fly into as the last block break. It's really cool, use of the borders, just sort of kind of magical, I guess. Um, and I love this. <laughs> this is the only one in the entire area, but it's like a little thunderstorm, and I think that's really cool. It's like rainy. Um, I think that's a really cool idea. It's a funny idea, and I love it. It's really cute. Um, looking at colors. Nothing too crazy. It's pretty, 
pretty simple. We've got some nice reds, greens, yellows of the Roji Biv colors. Got some nice purples, some nice yellows, some nice greens. Just some nice rainbow colors throughout the build. Um, and I think it does enough to say that it is, you know, as like magical and up in the air it is. And I think that, I, I, I say that's really cool. I love this. Moving on to the next thing. We got this build. Let me go out of nighttime. Yeah. This build, which is a junior coaster with a huge amount of seats. 12 cars per train, which is insane. Um, but still, very cool. I love the way the junior coaster comes over. It's, I assume it's supposed to be like an abandoned um, building build, and I love it. I really love the station. It's all falling apart. Um, disrepair and everything. It's really pretty. Uh, I also love the way this is done over here. These just abandoned sort of towers. Uh, whatever they might have used, been used for. Maybe this is uh, the industry we looked at earlier. Now it's been abandoned. Um, and yeah. It's very cool. I love how the trees over here, the foliage is pretty nice. Um, using the blobby trees and the colors are really well done with the colors used for the plants. Um, so I think that's expertly done. Um, I love the queue. The queue's nice. And yeah. I wouldn't say there's anything else. I can speak too much about it. Uh, but yeah, perfect color choice for everything. I really, really like it. Uh, I think... That's it. So, uh, let's move on to the next one. Now this one is a crazy cool theme. Um, especially for a water coaster. It's called H2 Glow. Like H2O, but now it's Glow. Which I think is really clever. I really like that idea of calling, you know, using the sort of chemistry like H2O and using it for as a good naming convention. It's totally something a theme park would do as a uh, theme park, because I was a little, like, confused why you would, you know, just, you know, choose a water coaster for this kind of theme. But honestly, I love the choice. Um, again, with the colors, it's amazing. Feels very neon. Um, almost feels Tron in a way, especially this. Gives off some really Tron feels. Um, and especially, I think this is Daft Punk. That's the theme. Um, I think that's what it's... I think that's the name of the theme. Um, like the style theming. Um, but I love I love the buildings. The trees are really cool with the colors, the crazy colors. Uh, the neon framing here is really cool. And I love how it just has these little airtime hills until it splashes in there. And I think this would be a great for a park. Again, I love the use of coloring, like, say, the lift hills and the different... All the way throughout, the color changes on the coaster, which is really cool. Great use of that. I love the orange through here, the gradients. Again, the gradients are perfect, especially this. This is absolutely perfect on the gradients. Um, and yeah, it just looks so cool. Actually, actually so cool. Um, I love this a lot. Um, but yeah. I also love this sort of back fence area, sort of like retaining wall, I guess you could say. Um, love that a lot. It's really cool. Really just adds some more depth to the build, in my opinion. And then coming over here, we got a slightly simple, more simpler version or simpler build, but we got Crystal Cavern Adventure. Um, got this really nice like tarp over here. This tarp fence and like, you know, simple campfire. Come on through here. Go through this nice rock work area. And you got these beautiful crystals that he made. Um, I think, uh, I would say this is really brilliant. Uh, I love the crystals throughout all of this. And uh, I don't know, I, I really love what you did with the crystals and the glass. That's something that no one has really done before. Um, 
of the glass over here as well, and using that as crystals is a fantastic idea. Especially yeah, using shapes within here, using just cubes, right? To sort of, you know, bring the idea that there are crystals and gems in the rocks, and it is absolutely amazing. Um, and again, over here, love this. Really love the way that the crystals and how it goes around the crystal rock comes over here and through the other crystals. Um, it's really, really cool. Um, if we look at nighttime, nothing too crazy. It's just, just a little campfire and then not much lighting. Um, so yeah, nothing too crazy. Coming over here, we got Peel's Adventure. I don't know what that refers to. Um, but yeah, it looks very cool. I love how the station is actually, uh, risen up. Um, I'll actually get it going. So you come in right here, you got this <laughs> really cool totem. Uh, I think, I, I really love that, and the colors of the totem are just really cool. I love that. <laughs> I don't know why they're so unhappy, but I really like that. Coming around here, you got, you know, it's pretty simple stuff. You go through a nice building. Coming around here, some more totems, some more flowers and plants, and then you go back up and you're finished. Uh, it's nothing too crazy. Uh, I love the smoke, the color smoke coming out. I don't know what this is referencing, um, but whatever it is, I know it's great because Robo has made it. Um, and I love it. It's a really cool theme. Uh, but yeah, and I love that this idea of putting a bridge instead of a regular, like, flat path is a really nice idea. Um, having the station risen up like that, I think that's really cool. Moving on to the next thing. This is not a ride, but it is one of the last blueprints he did create and put on the workshop. Um, and this is a big jump. It's about two years in jump, I think. And it's crazy. These stained glass windows are amazing. Um, I don't know actually how he did that. I'm actually really curious. Stained glass. Oh, okay. So we did use some textured walls um, stuff from here, as this is not uh, required to be vanilla. And I love the way the candles are done. This The stripping candles is really cool. Again, over here you got some dripping candles. The plants are really nice. I love this little graveyard. Um, the fence is really pretty. Got this nice entranceway to the gothic church. And then you got sort of these like air vents at the top. Which I think is really cool. And yeah, overall the building is just super, super well done. Um, again, love all the colors in it. Feels very scary and gothic. And yeah, and I, I love the way that it's been done. Um, and the way these chains have been done as well. It's just using the text signs, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's just using text signs back and forth. Then, as the last three things he's ever blueprinted, it was this gothic carriage. One, two, and three. Which go with the gothic church, which I think is really cool. And this gothic lamp. This bat lamp, as he called it. And it really is a bat. That's actually really cool. I love that the hell the bat is holding the lanterns. And I love how each of the carriages have their own sort of uh, style. I really love that. So yeah. You've come a long way, Robo. Really love the work that you've done. Um, fantastic job on all this. Um, if you'd like to check out all of his stuff, his workshop link will be down below, and you can check out and download all of these yourself. Um, but yeah, if you got a suggestion on who you would like me to, at what, whose workshop you'd like me to look at next, um, let me know, and I will take a look. Um, I think the next might be uh, Astrotron. I'd love to look at all of his stuff from when he started off and then where he's come now. Um, but that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. And hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.